Right, Thursday the 9th, then before we start, oh, my cat's all in here, but it's a special day for me, Bryce, because it's my eldest dog, Star's 16th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Birthday, Star. So, Thursday the 9th, how are you doing, Bryce? I'm so, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't feel like I'm on steady ground. These last, th like, three weeks literally have been... um. It's an awful song to compare it to, but you know that song by Miley Cyrus, the wrecking ball song. It's yes. Kind of, I feel like these last few weeks have been a bit of a wrecking ball. And I think a lot of people are feeling this way and um, it's been rough. This month has been rough. How about you? I'm exactly the same. I mean, we were just having a bit of a chat before we, uh, I always nearly forget to press record because we get so carried away. But yeah, it's been really rough. I mean, I, you know, I've mentioned before, one of my animals isn't very well and that's hard because when you see someone you love who's suffering, it's obviously very very hard and even though I do healing work or do lots of natural therapies and things like this when you've got that mum animal bond yeah. it's quite difficult to be objective but also it's more than that I think it's more in terms of how can I put it I'm noticing a lot of reactions in other people surprising reactions and I'm surprised it's still affecting me because I'm thinking by the time I get as old as I am I should know better that these things you know you over our lifetime we accumulate a lot of tools I had a lovely chat with Charlie Ward this morning and um you know we were chatting about the importance of teams and of the people around you and also of knowing that you've got those people that have got your back yeah yeah well we were just saying too you know I don't know a lot of people watching understand this like for me um, and I'm sure Catherine knew as well, when all of this started, um, I lost a lot of friends in my Atlanta life, in my off YouTube life, because of um, who I supported. And they all think I'm crazy because of all these, um, this knowledge that we've obtained over what's been happening uh, on these islands, we'll just say, and they think that I'm gone completely nutty because how can this possibly all be true this is you know even though we see the evidence you know but it's been even though i've had to mourn those friendships over the last few years what's been incredible is i've been able to meet you other people janine um all these other people that have like come into my life that i feel like i've known for lifetimes anyway so it's very natural it feels very good and up until this point it's been it's been security because we see each other all we're constantly for those that are watching like Catherine and I text all the time we're constantly in contact with each other even off camera as well so I feel like I have these these people but then the reality especially with the 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 new um the new flavor of the flu that's out now we'll say um you're seeing all these crazy things happen again where it's like hit me that most of these people I've connected with besides a few people here in the United States are in different countries and yeah. so there is a border that we, for the first time in my life, I have not been able to cross and neither can you because we're not doing it. And so it's getting more and more and more. I feel very like suffocated. Like I, I can't, you know, like all these people, I mean, I, I, thank God there are people here in the United States I have connected with, and I am thinking about taking a road trip um, after Christmas to go visit some of these people because I can, because they're in my country. But like in England, you're in a small country and you're stuck, you know, it's like, we're all kind of stuck. And, and I feel yeah. like, I know astrologically, like, I, I feel like the end is near. I know we've been saying that for a very long time and none of us know like when that plug is actually going to be pulled, but I feel like the veil is, we're almost at the year mark of the uh, winter solstice for the age of Aquarius, which was last December, which was the, so we're getting up to that year mark and the veil is really starting to thin right, right now, I think, because I think we're starting to recognize people even more for who they've been to us in the past. But yet we're still we're still kind of enslaved by our own reactions and our own thoughts, which sucks because I've spent most of my adult life working on my own thoughts through yoga. So now it's like, damn it, like they're still there, you know, yeah. um, it, you know, in their own fears and our own vulnerabilities and all that kind of stuff. I so agree with that. I think the veil is definitely thinning. And I think there's like everything is yin and yang and everything. Mm -hmm. 
And there's some really positive parts of that because you you have to be able to see. I mean, people talk, talk a lot about Mr. T saying the best thing that had ever happened to him is when he went bankrupt because he realised who his real friends are. Yeah. And I think, you know, this is what's happening is in terms of regardless of what your opinions are on a lot of things in life, you know, that when you know there's that deep connection with people there and there's that deep trust, you can agree to disagree on certain mm-hmm. things. Of course, if your core values are way off, that's going to be an issue. But if you're generally really good, trustworthy people with integrity, it's absolutely healthy to have different mm-hmm. opinions about different aspects of your life. And I think with the veil thinning, as you were talking about, I think what we're doing is seeing all of us ourselves and those around us really with such a fresh pair of eyes and perhaps with this inner knowing inner knowledge that we might have carried forward from past lives etc that are actually perhaps giving us answers that we didn't want to hear in some cases and then I feel like at the moment I'm almost like Oh, my goodness, like you at the start of all this, I lost a lot of friends, people that I would routinely socialize with in person, which Mm -hmm. seems like a thing of the past at the moment. And now I suppose this week I've almost had the fear side of things. Fear is the wrong word, the realization side of things again, that you know, I, I, I'm seeing other situations and people through different pairs of eyes. And that's quite hard, isn't it? If you're thinking, yes. oh, not again. <laughs> yeah, it's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. I mean, I feel like I'm constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I know that that's my own issue. Like I get that that's me. That has nothing to do with other people. But I think because, and we were off camera, we were chatting about this because I know, and we'll talk more with Tamar about this as well. Like if we step back and look at the bigger picture, of these lives that we're living. And I'm sure this is true for people watching right now, because if you're watching this channel, you're definitely one, you think like we do. So, you know, or else you wouldn't be on this channel, (laughs) but, um, but, um, you know, we have these like soul contracts that we make. The only problem is, is when we take our, our incarnation is we don't remember. And we're spending a lot of our life here trying to like figure out that mission that we already agreed to. And, um, but when we, also are living while we're doing this mission, we're also still living our day-to-day lives. Like the matrix still exists. It still exists right now. Like we still have to like s- keep up with, with civilization and, and, and do things that, that are considered to be normal for our, our civilized society. And so we experience these different interrelationships with people. But the thing is, and this is in the law of one as well, when you are a higher vibrational soul. So that means that you are an older soul, as we say, or you are you your light you have picked a path right and like the law of one says that with this time period a lot of people they call them wanderers uh souls have decided to come back into third density so i'm going to say this i had somebody ask me about this on one of my comments so consciously we're moving from third uh dimension to fifth dimension but the nature the earth itself is moving and our bodies are moving from third density to fourth density. So there's difference between dimension and density. So at this time, this conjunction of this planet, planet earth, this is one of the rare times in history where the earth itself is going to be harvested and we're going to be on the earth as it's harvested. This normally doesn't happen. Normally the living life on the earth, the planet has to get off of the planet for the planet to do it and then come back on. So this is a very rare opportunity. It's one of the biggest battles the cosmos has has ever seen. We know that astrologically, we are going into fourth density, positive, not negative. Third density, it's polarized. There's both good and bad. But fourth density is either positive or negative. And it's it's the age of Aquarius. It's the book of Revelation. We're, we, we, that's the law. We're moving into fourth density. Positive doesn't mean that the negative entities are not going to try to hijack that. Yeah. All right. And so those of us who are potentially coming from a higher soul realm and what a self like, cause that the light choosing the path of light is the service to others church choosing the path of darkness is service to self. We mm-hmm. think about all these rituals they do that service to self. Um, and so what selfless act is that for a sixth, uh, a, a master soul, a level six soul or five soul to volunteer like that hunger games. I volunteer as tribute, like to come down into a third density body again, which you run the risk at that point of being stuck in the stuck in that matrix again, and not being able to free to help move the planet forward. Most of us who are on these channels that have these platforms that are watching have figured it out. And so we've made the right decision. However, 
we're still going to get attacked. We're still going to get, I mean, I get scratched. I get bruises. I've had people do shitty things to me. Like we're still, they're still going to try to pull us down to try to hide. Does that make sense? Like hijack the planet um, and, and the consciousness of the planet. But in the meantime, that sounds all well and good, but we're still dealing with uh, mortal brains and mortal emotions. And yeah, it's it's it is rough. And 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 just to reiterate, I know again people watching this know when we're talking about sort of high density souls, you know, being an old soul isn't better than being a new soul. No. It's just different. It's just everyone's in different stages of their journeys and therefore are here to experience different things yep. for their soul progression. And because this competition is very much 3D, it's not here. We're not competing against each other. We're not better or worse of each other. We're, we're all needed. When you've got a team, you know, if you take a football team or a soccer, as you'd call it, there's no point if you're all forwards, if you're all goal scorers, right. also goalkeepers, you need defenders, you need midfielders. You've got to have diversity in everything to make everything work optimally. And I think what's really interesting is when you when you're noticing these things more, you know, at this week, I think because quite often when you're sleep deprived, you do notice things because you're in a slightly different state of consciousness and there's different brain waves. And there's a lot of really good points about that because it does bring realizations to the surface a lot mm -hmm. quicker. Um, and sometimes it's just about the fact where, you know, I like there's certain things I know I've got to deal with um, that I know what I've got to do is just then finding the energy to deal with it and find it perhaps a support to deal with it, but to move on to the next stage of what we're all meant to be doing. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's sort of, you know, that saying ignorance is bliss. It can be quite appealing, but I wouldn't want to be like that. It's just sometimes you just think, actually, if I, uh, you know, you probably just need a week out, a week to rest yeah. thing, and then you'd be back on target again. But I'm sitting here drinking my celery juice and my lemon juice, so I'll be all right. <laughs> well, that's it. I've lost my appetite. And I'm not a big eater anyway. Like, I'm not somebody that's like, I'm not a foodie. Um, I never really have been. Um, but I have gotten to the point these last three weeks where I literally, I feel like I've lost like seven pounds. I don't know because I don't weigh myself, but I, I've been laying in the bed at night and I'm feeling like my bones on the mattress and it hurts. Um, but I cannot bring myself to eat. Like I'm having to force myself to eat. And I was talking to Cindy about it, who we're going to see, uh, we're going to see tomorrow in our round table. And she had a good point. She said, every time your soul goes through a, a change, um, sometimes you you don't your your body just needs enough food to sustain itself but it needs to purge and so therefore you, that's why you're feeling gross about food and you have to let your body so it's like all these things are happening all these things are happening. i know other people have expressed the same thing as well it's like all these shifts are happening i know i talk about friction a lot and when we think about change we think about like oh you know if you're just basically like if you're going to go on a diet if you're going to do whatever like you're excited you think it's going to be fun but it gets hard change is hard change yeah. sucks and so when you have to go through that friction in order to then get to the other side, and I think for a lot of us too, I've made the realization that my expectation for the new earth, for what was going to, what was going to happen, I thought I had it all figured out in these last three weeks. I realized that the universe has other plans. Things are going to be shifting and I don't know what that is yet. And I have to be comfortable with like being uncomfortable with, with no, not knowing what's, what, what that's going to look like. Um, and I think a lot of people are coming to, it's easy. It's like that whole expectation versus reality. Like we all have these expectations, but most of the time what we expect is not what happens. There's a different I'm reality. So you said that because at the start of this journey, I started off this YouTube journey with a friend of mine, Kelly Rivers, who's still on YouTube. Hi, Kelly. And we met in hysterical circumstances because we went on a retreat and we were in a coaching group together. It was a bit of a disaster. It's a, another story. It was hysterical because the coach turned out to not be quite all they set themselves up for. But we had a giggle and we really bonded over it. But some of the things that he used to say were absolutely brilliant. And one of the things that he used to routinely say, and I really hits home with me, is no one ever breaks your heart. They break your expectations. And this is what I have realized is for me, I have I have my own set of expectations, which, of course, are going to be completely different to other people that I'm interacting with. And so sometimes when you feel that deflation, and I think everyone watching this, you know, you can only, you see by all the comments, we're all having our ups and downs at slightly different times. 
And that's why it's really good to have a community that can support each other through yeah. those ups and downs because you're all going to go through it at different times for different reasons and in different ways. But when you look at it in terms of, yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. You had your expectations about what this new life is going to be. We've all had our expectations about what the last, what was going to happen over the last couple of years and when and timescales and who was good and who was bad and who was this. And, and what we're finding is these expectations are being sort of crossed off and crossed off and crossed off and being okay with not knowing, with, with, with the fact that we're not meant to know some of these yeah. things come. And we're in the spiritual world, it doesn't matter what system you're following. One of the key things that we're always a work in process is being in the present moment, being in the here and now. And, you know, I have to laugh because I see myself falling into this trap so often is when you're looking at your expectations, you are absolutely not in the here and now. You're constantly nope. moving yourself into the future. And those expectations go away when you do bring yourself back into the present moment. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And every time, you know, that's the funny thing about, about the universe. I mean, there's that, that saying, like, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Yes. You know, like, um, you know, we, we, we're not, my grandfather used to say that. And this, my grandfather, this was my, my dad's dad, who's no longer, none of my grandparents are around anymore, but he, um, he had had this, uh, near death experience when he was in his forties, he had a major heart attack. This was before I was born. He had a major heart attack and he, he was a, he was a partier. Like he got kicked out of school. And when he was teenager for whiskey, I mean, like he was, he was, he was, I loved my grandfather. Like he was, he was a bit of a mischievous little boy, you know, and, and, and a very bold man, uh, you know, six foot five, really tall, you know, really very, very much a presence. But when he was in his mid forties, he had this like major heart attack and was rushed into, um, the hospital. Again, this is before I was born and he flatlined and he always would tell this story that he, uh, floated above his body. And he saw the nurses and the doctors talking and he heard their full conversation and the light opened up. And he, he always says like, I can't explain to you the light. It's not, it's not, I can't explain it to a human being. It's nothing we've ever seen before. He said, he walked into the light and he says it was Jesus that came down and was telling him that he needed to go back. It wasn't his time. And my grandfather kept saying, Oh no, I love it here. This is fantastic. Like Marianne's got the kids. She, he was going to throw my grandmother under the bus. Like she's got this. She's fine. Um, she'll be, she'll be okay. She's a strong woman. Um, and, and Jesus was like, no, you have to go back, Ed. It's not your time. You, you can't be here now. And then he woke up in the hospital and the doctors didn't realize the doctors thought he had like hallucinated. But then when he started saying, no, this is what you guys were saying. And he had technically had a flatline. They're like, oh, okay. Something did happen. Well, my grandfather, after that happened, he never feared mortality. I know we can't say the D word, D word that much, but he never feared that he lost all fear. And so all my life, as I knew him as my grandfather, he was a, a, a huge presence and he never took anything too seriously. Every, he laughed at everything. And he used to always tell us, kids, you can't control anything in this life. There's nothing in your control. The only thing you can, can control is how you behave. And that's it. Yes. Nothing. So and we have this illusion that we think everything is under our control, but it's not. And we're, we're learning that now, but that, that illusion is also crumbling with the matrix. You, we get the stock market, we're, we're waiting for the stock market to crash right now, frankly. Like we know it's coming, okay. you know, uh, you could, your house could burn down. Your partner could leave you, you know, so many scenarios. You have no control over any of that. Really. The only thing you can control is how you react to it. And so, and, that, and it's rough when you have those realizations, it, it sucks because you have to sit in that, you know, and I even tell my students all the time, part of yoga is sitting in your shit, is yeah. being uncomfortable and then, and not trying to run from it, but actually embrace that and grow from it. Um, but with this, this expectation versus reality. Yeah. I thought I, I literally thought before, before, um, it, it really heated up these last few months that I knew exactly what was going to happen and it was going to be fantastic. And now I know it's going to be good, but so much has happened these last three weeks that I'm like, I don't even know where I'm going to be living. Like, I don't even know like where, what this is going to look like. And, um, there is a meditation that people can, I, I do this because I do struggle with, um, anxiety. So I do have the propensity to worry about the future, worry about catastrophe thinking, like worry about things that aren't happening. Um, and so I've learned this trick and it keeps you in the now. I actually did it this morning. Uh, you know, tomorrow never comes. The past is done and tomorrow never comes. All we have is right now. And 
there's this Japanese meditation and I can't remember the name of it, but it's like everything you do, every action you take in your day, bring yourself fully present to that. So if you're chopping carrots to cook, instead of like thinking about something else is what we normally do. Think about every chop you're taking, watch that carrot really be here in that moment. I'm chopping carrots right now. I'm chopped. I was in the shower washing my hair. And for most of the blonde people out there, you know, like once a week, we got to wash our hair with purple shampoo. It's just something us blondes got to do. So it doesn't look nappy and you have to leave it in your hair for a little bit. So I'm like washing with my purple shampoo. And I was like, okay, bring yourself here. You're scrubbing your hair. You're getting that toner in your hair. Now you're going to shave like very, just very methodical about what you're doing. And it works. If you can bring yourself to that point when I'm practicing uh, my yoga practice, there's postures that I really hate that I know they're coming. But instead of thinking about that, I bring myself into that moment of like, I'm in this posture right now. This is where I am. This is the only thing happening right now. And animals are pretty good at doing that. Oh, animals are, they're really good and they're really in the moment. Um, although my dog last night, he, he, we think he's five now. He was probably born in December of 2016, but he was rescued from the street. So we're not hundred percent sure what day, but when he was a puppy, he was like super hyper. And then he's kind of mellowed out as he's gotten older. But last night I was like, is he getting his light body? Like what's happening? He's acting like he's a puppy again, like getting into everything, wanting to play. So, you know, but it's, it's, it, it, it's, and I do think though, with everything that I've been struggling with these last few weeks that everyone seems to be going through, it's, it's an opportunity, even though it sucks. Like, trust me, guys, I know it sucks. I'm tired. Like, I know, I know it sucks, but it's this opportunity for us to be able to like reevaluate ourselves too, and see like, what are we holding on to? What, what expectation are we still holding on to where the universe is saying like, are you sure about that? I don't think that's what's going to happen. You know, like just relax and give it part of yoga is surrendering to God or the, whatever you want to call that source that higher source, that consciousness is surrendering to that, that it knows better than you, you know, and it's in the universe and you're right, no matter whether you're a master soul or a new soul, the universe doesn't, doesn't, we're all equal in the universe. It's Absolutely. just where you are. It's still love. It's still love. So, um, but man, oh man, it's, this is, you know, we, what uh, the military back channel was one time talking about us having a Merry Christmas and like the last three Christmases, we thought that was going to be it, but it might be this one. But it's like dark night of the soul before before that that Merry Christmas comes along. So it really is. And it's just so fascinating to see. I mean, I really have empathized, you know, Stuff, you can see the mood in the comments of the videos and things as we've been going through the year. And as I said, it's very obvious that people are having their ups and downs at different times. And it's also very obvious that a lot of people are feeling this distance as a barrier because it is fantastic that we've got this technology. But also, I then seem to be thinking, well, what if the internet goes down then? Who am I going to talk? Luckily, I've got the foxes and the animals to talk I to. Got, I got my dog, so. I always get the best answers from them anyway. But, you know, in all seriousness, there's a lot of people. I'm lucky I don't live on my own. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a, there's a lot of people that are like, well, if this happens that they're going to say, and this is where I think there's a really fine line between educating you know all year we've all been told do your own research do your own research do your own research but you mustn't forget to live yeah that's the important thing yes sometimes knowing these things can really help us so long as we don't hold on to right. too much of it so it can really help inform us to make the best decisions for us and our loved ones any loved ones that listen to us <laughs> although we can still make decisions yeah, right you don't want to hold on to it and you don't, you still got to get on with living your life now, because if not, what the hell's the point? Exactly. It's so funny. Somebody commented a couple of weeks ago on one of my, um, I can't remember if it was an episode I did by myself or with somebody, but they commented, they were like, you don't talk about the, the young people anymore. And I was kind of confused by that because I was like, dude, like we know we know what's going on with the young people. Like we know that we know, but I'm not focusing on more because we've already processed that we can't, we can't stay in that, that, in that mind, that mindset forever. Like we, we have to move forward and we have to start healing. You know, we can't. So I think, I think people, yeah, I think you're right. Like this whole, like living, you know, do your research, but step away a little bit. Yeah. It's so funny. I was telling, I, I teach, I used to teach daily Mysore classes, but I don't anymore. Now I just teach courses. And, um, as far as like off of, of the internet, what I do in Atlanta and I, I was telling, um, this course I teach on Sunday afternoons, I was, I was talking about this teacher that was one of my favorite teachers, a man by the name of Ram Doss, who's no longer with us. He passed away in 2019, very at a very old age, but his birth name was Richard Albert. 
And back in like the 60s and 70s, he was a professor of psychology at Harvard University. And he and one of his colleagues were involved through Harvard uh, with this experimentation. I have to be careful with what I say, but like using psychedelics to yeah. understand the human mind. And he ended up going a little too far with his experiments and lost his job. And he ended up in India and he met his uh, a Maharaji, his, his uh, guru, and he's ended up becoming a fabulous teacher. He's, his commentaries are fantastic. I've learned a lot from him and his books, but um, he talked a lot in his books. He talked a lot about his experience with these like psychedelics mm -hmm. and how in a lot of ways you would, you would actually experience something very, very spiritual, but at some point you have to stop and you have to live it. You have to experience it without the crutch. And it's kind of the same thing with the research, like all of us, and we research, 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 but at some point things have to be put aside and, and the, the actual, your actual DNA, your actual physical yes. psyche has to just take it in and then live. You know, it's the same, it's the same concept. Um, it's uh, one of my old teachers, David Grieg used to say, you know, when you go and listen to like Indians in India, like concerts, they will spend like eight hours that day preparing for this one concert. But in America or in the West, when you go see a rock band, yeah. they only warm up for like five minutes and it's good enough for rock and roll. And my teachers used to say, sometimes things just have to be good enough for rock and roll. Sometimes you just have to move forward. You have to put things down and just, and just act and just live. And so I think that's what she brought up is really, really important. Um, and the thing is too, it can also drive you crazy. Like if you, I mean, that's one thing I miss. I miss human touch. Yeah, I completely. Hugging I didn't friends. realize I would, but I have. I've always joked I'm not a very huggy, kissy, but I'm always hugging my animals and kissing them. Mm -hmm. But actually, I really do miss that human interaction. Yeah, yeah. I miss yeah. hugging my yeah. friends. Yeah. Like laughing with them, like face to face at a bar. You yeah. Know? really you know and and laughing and i i miss that and um and um you know so for a lot of us i think it's this this situation especially wherever you live i mean i i am lucky because i'm in a state that's not super like mm. you know i'm able to go out and do and live and, and i can go to the park and there, you know it's it's not but it's still a liberal city within a very open state so i still have to be a little bit careful about certain things but um but, you know, these people who are living in countries that are like mega lockdown or states mm -hmm. that are mega, you're by yourself. You don't have that human connection except for through Zoom, but you're not touching other humans. You're not in their in their realm physically. And then you're sitting and you're researching all day. It's going to drive you crazy. It's going to bring you to a place mm -hmm. of, of, of um, deep depression, you know, and I feel like I felt that these last few weeks. I feel like I've entered into a little bit of like a again, a dark night of the soul, a depression, grief, sorrow. Like there's all these things that are, I'm having to process. And I think we all are. It's not just us individually. So if anybody watching thinks it's just you, it's not just you. <laughs> we're, we're all... so don't you worry. We're going through it with you. Yeah. Well, we're all having pity parties together. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I even, I think I laughed with you last time. Like I love musical theater. Um, and so whenever I'm feeling super bad, I'll just like put on musicals because you can't, you can't be sad listening to musicals. So it's so funny. I'm one of the weird people that hates musical theater. Oh, really? I hate the overacting, but I love certain things and I do love music and I do love just playing with the animals and getting out and I love laughing. I always try and make sure I connect with someone like you who's going to really make me laugh Aww. and realize that, you know, you've got to have the thing and not take yourself too seriously and not take it all. Now, of course, there's a lot of serious things happening in the world, but, you know, we are meant to be beings of joy. We're meant to bring beings of joy. We don't have to stay there. You can get there, you can feel it, and you don't have to stay there. And I, that's uh, something I've been having to kick myself up the backside a bit over yeah. the last couple of weeks of making sure I don't allow myself into a self-pity or stay there sort of state. And I luckily can laugh about it now because I can recognize it and then think, goodness me, have I not learned this lesson by now? Um, yeah, but that's the highest level of spirituality. That's what all yeah. the great spiritual gurus, all the swamis, they all tell you that laughter, if you are in a place where you can laugh at yourself, you've, you've reached the highest realm of spiritual understanding. Um, even in the yoga sutras and, uh, Sri Swami Satitananda's commentary, he speaks about like, when you actually understand who you are, not who you are in your body, but who you are as a soul, you can actually enjoy life, even with the ups and the downs, because it's not so serious. 
it's not so serious. Um, and so that, but, but then it's, it's almost my teacher, David Greig used to say, this is like the unsolvable riddle. Like, how do you get to that point? Cause we all, I mean, I've had pity. We all have pity parties. We all have like days where we just want to like throw a temper tantrum and yeah. um, cry. And, and those are necessary. If you got to cry, go cry. It's detoxing. Something's detoxing out of you. But, um, but to be able to actually giggle and laugh, well, look at Mr. T like Mr. T here in America. Like he, I think he's funny. Oh, like, he's really, really funny. And the more you get to know him, I mean, not that I've ever met him personally right. in this life, who knows him past. Um, but, um, you know, he's a, he's really funny. I was speaking to Charlie about this this morning. That's the one thing I love about the Brits is their sense of humour. Mm -hmm. You know, we have quite a different sense of humour to other people and a Brit really gets a Brit sense of humour. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> And that was, and that, but think about it with Mr. T. I mean, who he knows everything about everything going on, all the details, oh. the gory details that I don't even want to know. And he was still, he's still able to crack jokes. Yeah. And laugh. Absolutely. And, I, and enjoy life. And, and when he's in places, you, you know, to actually enjoy the experience. If he's on the golf club or he's out to dinner or he's having a certain thing, so you're like, you know, I've chosen to put myself in this situation. Most of the time, guys, when I'm saying this, I'm talking to myself, by the way. I'm just reminding myself of all the things that I can forget sometimes in daily life when I'm running around like Benny Hill. Um, so, yeah, but it, it is interesting. And I've really empathised with a lot of people that have been going through it. I mean, I can see from sort of some of the correspondence I'm getting, a lot of people are, are going through it a lot. And then you lift yourself up and you just think, I mean, we've had some laughable stuff in the UK. I mean, it's comical how much trouble our parliaments are in and our, our politicians are in but it's also great to see uh, I'm only just learning I'm so behind the curve I'm only just learning how to use Twitter me and too I suck at Twitter I'm trying to learn it I just, well. like, how does everyone find everything on Twitter but I'm, I'm slowly getting there but it is quite hysterical because I'm so behind but I'm loving the fact of all these people are coming out now and calling bullshit on it I mean seriously some of the you know, big sports stars and say what you say about big sports stars, but they are influential and they are coming out and saying, this is absolute bullshit. They are just taking yeah. the piss now. Surely everyone can see it. And so our new plan C, because the government keeps saying they're going to lock us down again, which you can see coming a mile off. Yeah. And that called their plan B of the new moronic variant, moronic variant. I mean, seriously, is it, which everyone knows. I mean, I was saying to my daughter this morning, it's like saying to people, I've discovered an orange unicorn. It's like, you've never discovered the unicorn. You can't prove the unicorn exists in the first place. So how can you say you've now discovered and tested for an orange unicorn when you haven't seen, unless you've been on these psychedelics, the normal yes. unicorn? <laughs> well, I, you know, thank you. Because I, I was... I yesterday I was I like wanted to punch a wall yesterday and no I'm not on my period like it was not like this was like real real anger because I, I I'm like I'm not a scientist I studied English I studied literature like I'm not I'm not but I'm like this is this is common sense like this is so obvious yeah so obvious am I crazy like what's going how is this happening? Like, how the hell are people allowing this to happen? Like, this yeah. is so idiotic. Like, I don't understand. It's even if you just look at the statistics, I mean, CDC's right down the road. Um, and I, again, I'm a layman. I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor, but I can read. Yeah. I can read. And you can read this tweet and see that people aren't dropping down in front of you. Exactly. Uh, do you think we should all get little alien outfits, proper alien outfits, and walk around the streets? I think that could make a real difference, actually. We could be, we could speed it up. We could all be, everyone watching this, we can be the alien invasion. We can help them. Come we on. Could come help on, them on, come well, on. Someone that I'd love to dress up as an alien. If anyone knows where I can get a really good alien costume from, really <laughs> think we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, Catherine, I, there was an episode you did with Janine a while ago, and I still giggle about something you said. You were talking about this. Oh, yeah. And um, you said something. You said you would make a really good baddie because you would just be like, this is the real one. <laughs> like, what? Yes. Oh, I guess. <laughs> See what they said on TV? This is the real one. <laughs> you yeah. just see, like I just want to get these crisis actors, these stupid celebrities and the politicians and sit them down and I'll dress up as nursey. And then just as they're smiling for the camera, I'll whisper into the it's the real one. Or violence. Going stories. in. Stories. 
and just watch their face. I do wonder sometimes, because I can understand a lot of these baddies' plans. I think I must have been an evil in the James Bond films in a previous life. <laughs> I loved it, though. When you said that, I laughed so hard. And I was like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. Can we please do, do that? It. This would be the best punishment for them. I mean, we, that would be the start of it. You know, it really would be the start of it. I'd quite like to throw them in a shark tank as well. So that I mean, I, it's just, and I know, like, I, and Tamara had said this before, and I agree with her. Like, I know that, and that for us, like, in England, in America, in Australia, in Canada, in most of Europe, we are, we have roofs over our head. We have food. We have, we're, we, we got money in our bank account. Like we're fine. We're not struggling like people in uh, developing countries or have had the crap beaten out of them in these countries. Like I understand that, but the level of frustration I feel right now, just because my, and this is going to sound selfish, but I feel like my life, all of our lives have been put on such a halt and I feel restricted and, and just like my best friend lives in Toronto and I haven't seen him in like two years Yeah, because we can't cross the border. And that pisses me off that Yeah, there, that there are people and like all the people I've met, which I know I've known you guys before. So we're, you know, yeah. like I can't just like go see you. Like I can't like, I don't have that freedom to be able to, to do that when I should be able to, because of this like stupid, as Charlie says, pantomime. Yeah, exactly. And it's so frustrating, but I think we're going to be moving forward into our new reality. We're all going to be so much more compassionate. I know I sound a bit like a broken record, but, you know, I've been saying to people, I've been working for a lot of years with people to get them to see their animal, their animals' lives through the animals' eyes, not through humans. And when we look at the restrictions that we place on animals, you know, and, and if I, you know, it's like people that have horses and they put them in these tiny little yeah. fields in a stable and they put all these gadgets on them and they can't play with their friends because they're too valuable and they might get kicked. So they have to be in a field on their own. Oh, but it's okay. They can see each other across the fence. And you're just like, Oh no. my God. And, and it's, it is ignorance, you know, it's not, and it's not intentional. It's a lack of understanding. It's the fact of people that never let their dogs off the lead that keep their cats in houses. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I know sometimes you have to, if you live in a dangerous place and you've rescued an animal, if you haven't rescued an animal, then don't bloody get a cat if you live in a dangerous place, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, Cause that's for your benefit, not for the animal's benefit. So I think, it's really good in a way we in the privilege world are really feeling a lot of this because, you know, it's like I suddenly thought the other day I th when I was having a chat, I think, to Jean-Claude and he was sort of saying we've never been through this level of stress. I was like, hang on a minute. I remember speaking to my grandparents who were living in the middle of London when they were being bombed, having children, they had no electricity because all their power was off. They had no heat and they didn't know where their next meal was coming from. They didn't know whether they were going to be bombed and they'd just given birth to a baby and all the men were all fighting in the war. So actually humans have been through this level of stress. I know it's different. Every type yeah. of stress is different, but there's a lot of people around the globe, uh, you know, probably as we speak, that are crossing waters in boats as refugees. Oh, yeah. Are, um you know that are being bombed out of their houses that are being um you know culled for ethnic cleansing for things like this so when we sort of look and we are I, and I, again folks i'm talking about me as well with this and thinking about having a poor me moment remembering actually do you know what there's, there's a lot less more people a lot worse off than us and Ooh. i will be a more compassionate human for what i'm going through now you may, you put up a good point. Like I understand now the need for people to, cause we have that in America coming from people, Cubans will get on a yeah. boat and risk their lives to get to America and um, for asylum. And even though what I'm experiencing in Atlanta, Georgia is nothing compared to like the brutality of what they've gone through. I kind of get it now. Like I, yeah. I get a little bit more now and I love the whole caged animal reference. Yeah. I mean, when we, when I, so I brought, back like six dogs so far from india and my dog uh he was rescued as a puppy so he doesn't have a lot like he's still kind of wild like he still has that that instinct in him but he doesn't understand cars like the dogs you rescue that are older understand cars he doesn't um, <laughs> he has no clue um but uh with with robbie he we i tried crate training him because my dad's a vet and that was what we knew to do was to but he would break out of the crate every yeah. time 
he would watch with through multiple different crates. He would watch the, the lock and he would learn how he learned how to untie it to get out. And so we couldn't do that. We had to like listen to what he needed because he, his ancestors were on the streets. He was wild. And, um, and it totally, that was the first realization I had with things that we think we know about certain species. We actually exactly. don't know. Let them tell you. And now we're the caged animals. Now we're the ones that are like. Yeah, that's such a perfect example of creating dogs. Now, when I grew up, dog crates didn't exist. You didn't put yourselves only if they were traveling abroad or something like this. And now it's completely normal to create to yourself. But that's purely for the bloody humans benefit because it's easy to leave them. None of my dogs are quite changed. I mean, my, my Romanian rescues had such a traumatic journey over from Romania and such tragic experience. I mean, there's no way I'd get them in a crate. I probably yeah. would now if I needed to, but I wouldn't choose to. They're fine going in the car now and everything, yeah. which they weren't initially at all. But it's just like, you know, my view is if you wouldn't do it to your child, don't do it to your animal. Why? Yeah. Why? Because you don't want to, you know, realize why is your dog chewing your house up in the first place? Why are they lonely? Why are they pining? Why are they doing this? Not solve the problem by shoving them in a metal cage. You, yeah. okay. you know, you wouldn't do that to your two-year-old or something. No. Oh, actually, I think um, I sent you a picture um, of yes. my, niece. <laughs> my, my niece who is seven now. Yeah. She's always, She's like you. She's like a dog whisperer. She's always, since she was a, in diapers, she has yeah. always gravitated towards dogs. She can calm a dog down. She can, he, she's not afraid of them, even when they jump. And my mother has a, a King Charles Spaniel small dog, Maggie, and she has a little crate. She actually uses it at like a dog bed. Like my mom. Yeah, and that's open, fine. If you, you leave know? the door open. Yeah. So they can come and go. Come and go. No problem with that. Well, I sent, I sent Kevin a picture of my niece when she's probably like two. She, yeah. she, she, whenever she was at my mother's house, she would lock herself into the crate with Maggie. Yeah. Like she went with a dog. She was like, I'm done. I'm going to go. And she would like lock the door with her and Maggie in the crate. Like, yeah. And I know I couldn't post that picture because people would think it was just like so horrible. Know, and it was imagine. like, but, but it's brilliant because it's a choice and things. Yeah. And animals choice. I'm not saying crates are inherently car at call. And of course, sometimes you've got to keep your animals safe. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just, so don't take it to extreme things. I'm just saying it's amazing how much we do for our convenience. Yeah. And we can shut out, even though we do really know, you know, that it wouldn't. And I just think, I think it this hardship, which isn't hardship, as we know, compared to what a lot of people go through, but for us, it might be, is really going to make us more compassionate moving forward to see the world through a different pair of eyes. Um, and I think we needed that because even though a lot of people have kept working throughout it, I mean, I know loads of people that haven't had any time off that haven't had, you know, been furloughed and things. So they have been keeping true. But I still think they're seeing things in a different way now, which is a real positive, thank God. Yeah. I, I'll never, I'll never, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think, I, yeah, absolutely. You, 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 you hit the nail on the head with the, yeah, we are going to have more compassion and more understanding for where people are coming from because, you know, it's easy to, to think about yourself in a certain situation. And maybe people are doing that now, comparing what's happening now to, uh, I'll just say the 1930s and 40s because I want to be careful with the um, with the algorithms. But uh, you always think that you would never fall for that that was going on, you know, to be the good, you know. And and then we're, and then we're seeing it now. And you always so what you, you when you put yourself, you think about yourself in certain situations, like how would you respond? And you always think you're going to respond with the utmost integrity until you get to that situation. Yeah. And so it is a good and 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 now that we are living through this massive. Um, transition as humanity we are able our perce our perception on other people and other people's issues is probably going to be more compassionate because we have a deeper understanding a deeper empathy for that loneliness that that fear you know i think that's something i experienced these last few weeks too is even though i know like even though i know in my head that we are we're going to be fine and that this is just a necessary transition and there's friction with transition and it's always like birthing a baby. It's always uncomfortable and painful until the baby comes. Um, there's still that fear that, oh my God, like what if this never, what if we're just slip the water slowly boiling with that frog that's slowly like yeah. what if I never get to travel again what if I never get to cross another border again what if I never see my friend in Toronto again because because uh, we've got this border now that, that used to be easy to cross but now yeah. is, is like the Berlin Wall you know why what what if like that 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 catastrophe thinking and and um and you know what and, and in fairness to anybody else who is thinking that this is we've been waiting for this for a long time 
So I understand that if if you're, if you have, if you're having those moments like me where it's like, crap, like what, what if this is it, you know, but, um, but I, we know that it is, it's going to be okay. And I do feel like things are like really popping off. We're just not really seeing really popping off. I mean, it is really quite funny to see the speed of which things are coming out and also the speed of which things aren't coming out. Like the big trial that's going on in America at the moment. I know. is hearing anything about it's just complete radio silence and even my mother said to me he's a very wise woman even she said yesterday this whole even she could see she doesn't look at all the stuff that we do and everything but even she could see that just taking the british example of the ridiculous fuss over the politicians breaking lockdown and having a christmas party last year even she could see that was a complete distraction for what was really going on so do you know as if that's of any you know seriously of all things going on in the world who cares about christmas party i know and I'm say it shows a complete lack of integrity in line but anyone who thinks any of the current politicians have got any integrity and don't lie you know you shouldn't really need to see something about christmas party to realize that i know well i heard and i don't know because i'm not new york um, we'll have to ask some of our friends here in new york right now but i heard that um we'll say this uh case that's happening that people were walking by and there's like one guard outside and they're like wait a minute why is there only one guard outside of this courthouse for this big of a trial yeah what the hell's happening what's going on is yeah. this really happening or is this all just a show too like has this already been taken care of like how is this going to play itself out because you're right because that this what's happening in the united states right now affects the world yeah completely and you know if they can do the carl rittenhouse one and be on live tv how can it possibly i mean you know this is the other thing we're, we're realizing is we have no idea what's going on because this as you say there's a very good chance that that trial isn't actually happening at the moment i mean what because people have told us but none of the press seem to be allowed in no so, one know. literally y'all there is one security guard else one in new york oh, city please, anyone in new york please 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 go and have a look and tell us in the comments below or email us or message us because i'm dying to find out i know i was speaking to mel k early on in the week and she was saying that they weren't letting anyone in they weren't letting the press a lot of the press in they weren't letting anyone else in so um it, it isn't that sh- i mean like okay the press is supposed to be there to inform us like the people exactly. they're supposed to be on our side they're supposed to be on our side yeah and this this thing affects everyone this was about leaders from everywhere exactly and the press why why aren't they i mean we have another case happening here in america right now it's the josh duggar case which um i'm 19 oh yeah i've heard you speak about that yeah and it's every day there's information coming up i mean i'm following it because i know who he is and i know the crimes he's been accused of it's the exact same stuff as the other um Anyway, you guys know what we're talking about. So I've been following it to see because he was also connected to some like political parties in uh, D.C. So I'm kind of curious to see yes. that his case and that case are happening at the same time. Uh, but that case, you have reporters there. There's um, it's in Arkansas. There's a uh, camera. I mean, it's literally it looks it, it's not like the Kyle situation like this yeah. literally looks like this is really happening. And he's really about to go down for this stuff. And if he does, he'll probably be singing like a canary about his yeah, connections. Exactly. But like, how come this kid, I mean, he's kid, he's like, what, 32, this, this reality star, like D level celebrity, who's only really famous in the United States. He's getting coverage. Yeah. But she's not. But she's not. And this is what throughout this whole journey, it's more about us paying attention to what we're not seeing. Because everything we're seeing, we now know, is a complete distraction. Yep. And I want to get a T-shirt and just walk around in it. In fact, I'm doing a range T-shirt that, you know, look out for that orange unicorn because and make sure you can test for it because it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I, 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 it's absolutely frightening. I mean, if one more person tells me about, oh, well, this variance on the rise, it's like, how the bloody hell you know? You can then say to them, you do know that the tests are not accurate well i know that but the new variant it's like how can you put those two things in a sentence together exactly it's not connecting in your brain i reckon they have put a lot of fluoride back in the water that's the only excuse i can come up with you know what i was thinking today i was thinking about when i when i was in the shower and i was having to remind myself to wash my hair because i was getting so so frustrated about this whole thing but it was like this is so fucking like it's so obvious it's so obvious it's, how are people not seeing this and i kept thinking about um they say love is blind, you know, and like people who are in like yes. US 
ABUS IVE relationships, how they, they just refuse to see it. I'm like, maybe that's what's happening. Maybe people are just in an ABUS -E relationship and they're just defending their, because that's what the governments are doing to us right now. Like they're following that playbook of, of what ABUSC -E looks like. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to watch the audio, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, where the gaslighting, the control, the um, making you feel like somebody posted, actually someone I follow from UK posted like, your human rights are not rewards. Yeah, exactly. Your, your right to be able to move around this globe and see people, that's not a reward. That's your birth and nor right. should animal rights be a reward either. Exactly. Nor should they be. Nor should you be lucky if you're kept in these conditions. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, Actually, I was talking about this in one of the support groups yesterday because people were asking uh, off camera, like, do you think that the new medical system will involve animals too? And I said, hell yeah. I was like, what was the first thing Mr. T did when he became our leader? He, it was the children or young people, the, the laws about the young people that he changed, making it, uh, uh, uh you know, yeah. cr uh, crime, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and animals. Yes. That's that. If you, yeah. if you do stuff to young, young children, it's up with him yeah. animals too. He also yeah. made a federal law in the United States. You, it is a felony to hurt an animal. Yeah, he's the first president to do that. So he, he took, all, you know, because we're just ugly animals, as I always say. <laughs> you know, every animal has its pros and cons. I mean, anyone who wants to see about, you know, real, um, you know, psychic communication and, and amazing intelligence, go and look at some of the cetaceans, uh, you know, dolphins and. Um, whales and things like that amazing so intelligence is relevant we, we always think we've got special skills as humans which we absolutely have but every species has their own set of sweetness we've got canadian geese here that have flown all the way from canada i mean can you imagine i'm gonna catch, I'm gonna catch you right with them my garden and i still can't even levitate even though i'm practicing and yet a geese in my neighbor's pond can fly up, not getting on an airplane with their own wings from Canada to England. How amazing. So don't tell me that humans are the only ones with special powers. Imagine yeah. if we could do that. We wouldn't care about the boundaries, would we? We'd just no, that's what I say. I just, I just hitch a ride with the geese and I can go pick up with you. <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, we get that. We have birds that fly south here from because our winters are mild. So we get yeah. that. They all come down from the south too. And, um, you know, it's funny. I know with uh, the street dogs, like with my dog, I know that if, if, if he was left on the streets and wasn't like hit by a car or didn't have any type of parasite issue, he could live to be 20, 25 years old. Exactly. This is what I was saying to our clients. And, you know, my dog, um, Star, she was the runt of the litter and she was born with no tail. She's the only animal I've ever had that we know her birthday. Because my mum, and she wasn't going to make it because the mum rejected her. Mm -hmm. And um, so my mum sort of hand reared her and she was always tiny and things like this. And because she was born with no tail, her legs were too upright. So she had to have her legs off right on. She's really happy and fine. But the fact that she's like, you know, the oldest one of her litter and touch wood still going strong, despite having had so many obstacles interventions and obstacles but again 16 should not be old for a laboratory no. and like we talk about for humans you know a lot of people um you know they say oh now i'm 60 now i'm 70 and i'm thinking you know but it doesn't have to be like that because you can see yeah. other people of that age who are so amazingly vibrant well they say our life is going to be expanded at first i heard 200 years then one of the um cassiopeian boards it said 400 years so your age now add 400 to it. That wow. means that we're still preteens. We're yeah. still middle schoolers. If that's how long we're going to be living. So I like it. it feels like I do feel mentally I'm regressing actually. Yeah. <laughs> I actually feel health. So physically, and I actually asked Janine this question a long time ago and I might've talked about it with you, but before all the lockdown happened, I was really struggling with arthritis, like big time. Like I was for, for my age, I was like crippled and I know I've beaten my body up. Like I've no, I, I know that it's mostly me, just the crazy things I've done to my body throughout the years for my, for my job. Um, but then once lockdown started, I started incorporating other physical activity and all of a sudden it went away. And I feel at 38, I'll be 39 in February. I feel better than I did at 28. Yeah. And I remember asking Janine a, a long time ago. I don't even know if she remembers um, because even in the book of Revelation, it talks about you will inherit your light body. Like your DNA will start to change. And I said, is that, is that what's happening? And she basically just, 
Uh, this is me that's throwing down the cards, mimicking Janine, throwing down the cards. Basically, she got that. You know, when you stand in the light, when you stand in truth, your whole DNA will start to like change because and of that. It's also about balance as well, because there is so there is so such a thing as too much of a good thing. Yeah. So all of these practices are absolutely amazing and have loads and loads of benefits. But also, perhaps you're at a stage of your life now where you're you're bringing more balance into it. In yeah, terms. and I think too, I think there was some psychology behind it as well. I'd had some experiences Definitely. with some teachers that weren't good, and I think that I was carrying that. But then I could release it once um, once the lockdown happened and I couldn't physically go teach. Like it was like a yeah. release that happened. So you don't know. I mean, we, I mean, it still amazes me. And, and this is what I do for a living. I talk about the mind and how it affects the body, but it still amazes me how much our, our thoughts and our perception of action, because when action happens, action is neither good nor bad. It's just action. Exactly. It's how we perceive the action. So what I might see is bad. Catherine might see as good, but how I've perceived that action has now drastically changed my mind field which is my body and so by releasing that i think that there's a lot to be said for that that healing was able to actually happen and there was actually some some mental healing which caused physical healing as well um it's it's pretty wild and, and in saying that talking about magical abilities like the fact that our minds can do that even on a subconscious level shows you how powerful we actually are as human beings absolutely incredible isn't it and i love it i love it there's so much still for us to explore oh, yeah. and learn it's i mean my life is completely different balance wise to where it was two years ago where i had another company which i sold and i was rushing off here there and everywhere and you know now it's just just feels so much more in balance than it was then and i look back now and i was thinking what was i thinking but at the time it seemed completely normal so yeah. you know, you're meant to go through these stages everyone we're all meant to learn from our experiences and sometimes you've got to do it and i think you know where we're looking in the news and people are like that person's been pictured next to that person and that person's been pictured sometimes you you have to experience it. Sometimes you go into a job, you go into an industry, and only because you're in there do you see the inside information. I mean, again, Charlie was speaking to a Google whistleblower very early this morning, and that person would have gone in there going, thinking that Google was one of the most amazing companies to work for and doing this. And, and But had they not been on the inside, they would never have known all this information. Um, now, just because he chose to work for Google doesn't make that person a bad person no. at all, quite the opposite. And I think this is what we've got to do is sometimes we all know the most important lessons you're going to learn are from dodgy situations, dodgy relationships, choices that in you, you might look as a mistake that actually in hindsight, you look back and say, well, that wasn't a mistake because I learned so much from that that made me course correct much yeah. more than I would have done from just puddling along with everything being okay. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's so funny. Right when I came out as a, a Mr. T supporter, like got vocal about it, I had somebody in the yoga community send me a picture of Mr. T uh, with, um, the man who owned the Island. We'll just say it that yeah. way. And I sent back to him. I was like, listen, they were in the same social circles and we know he kicked him out of his, his resort. Like we know that there were issues. Yeah. And I found a picture of me with the, standing beside another teacher who has gotten into a lot of trouble for some yeah. really serious stuff. And I was like, I have a picture with this guy and I can't stand him, but yeah. we, we were in the same shala. We were in the same social circles so of course there's pictures of us together because it's a small world that one percent of people that's a small world you're gonna see pictures of them but it doesn't mean and that, that i think i think going back to like the the whole trial like us learning that we can't always trust what we see in a lot of ways we have to critically think about this we have to really understand that things can be manipulated um so yeah yeah oh it's so good i feel so much better now yeah. speaking to you i really do and this is what another message for people you know just talk it out i've heard a lot of people speaking it but you know at the start of the conversation i was not having a particularly good day me either um, you know with all sorts of things that i was letting affect me and now i've had a good old chin work with my bestie i feel like a completely different person and um yeah ready to go and do my poo picking <laughs> Anyone who's got horses knows how much time you spend picking up poo, but it's worth it. Good old manure. Yeah. Yeah. I have to pick up my dog's poo because, and he he makes man poo, so it's, it's yeah. We love talking but about poo. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna catch one of those 
birds that flies to England. I'm just going to ride them and come over. Yeah, just ride on the back. Well, you know, my neighbours have got the most beautiful pond in their garden. I mean, it's just stunning. I walk past it every day because it's just amazing. And every time when the Canadian geese come, they think I'm hysterical because I'm so excited to see them there. And I'm like, oh, you've made it. You've made it. It's just Tell me incredible. what life is like on the, the other country. Yeah, I tell me, tell me. Right what are you because you just think, and I'm thinking, I've done my two-hour walk with my dogs and I'm a bit puffed out. And I'm thinking that you've flown from Canada. <laughs> this is ridiculous. How can I say I'm tired? So this is what I think. You know, every, every creature every whether it's plant animal mineral we're all capable of so much more than we think and sometimes we need that good kick up the backside like what i have this week to make me realize it so yeah 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 well, this is, we got a great round table tomorrow so so excited about exciting chats tomorrow as well coming up no we? we've got Catherine and i got two time with tomorrow to, tomorrow 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 and another and i gotta send you information about a the subject oh yes the other one oh. i'm so excited that's my lovely treat for tonight listen that thank you so much honestly i feel so much better big hugs from across big the hug. pond. yes 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 i'll go and have a word with those canadian geese and see if we can both hitch a ride <laughs> and um, catch up in all congregate in canada perhaps yeah <laughs> uh, hey <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. so. <laughs> all have right a brilliant brilliant rest of the day and i'll speak tomorrow yes absolutely bye, bye guys bye.